Good evening. I want to welcome you to our parent roundtable discussion called Holding It Together. My name is Greg Wisinski, Catholic speaker and author. And you know, one of the biggest subjects that so many people want to know about as we travel around the country is what do I do for my children? Maybe they're distant from the faith, maybe they're struggling with what's going on in school, or maybe even in their adult relationships. And so tonight I gathered some of my best friends with us to just talk about what it really means to be strong, faith-filled parents, but even more importantly, just how we show love to our children, even when we aren't sure of the answers for them. And so we thank you for joining us, and we thank you for uh, just the gift of you and your desire to grow in closeness to God. So I just want to go around the table. Uh, I'm here with uh, well, my wife, Amy. Maybe you've met Amy before. And uh, I guess, you know, why don't you introduce? How many kids do we have? How old are they? All that good stuff. <laughs> Greg and I have two children, um, Nathan and Natalie. Nathan is 21 almost in another month. Um, and then Natalie is 18. So they are both away at college. Natalie's first year, Nathan's third year. Perfect. And then uh, we'll go to Jody and Paul Bachman. Uh, tell you. us a little bit about uh, yourself and sure <laughs> no thank you yeah we uh well we just celebrated our 29th wedding anniversary yesterday Good Good to you. thank you Good for that you. yeah she's she's stuck with me for all this time <laughs> <laughs> that's right. that's i'm right. a very lucky man <laughs> um, we have three girls they are uh, age 24 almost five out of school graduated uh, a couple years ago and is a teacher uh today teaching kindergarten uh, which is a challenge, as we know, in this yeah. pandemic. And yeah. we have another, our middle daughter just graduated this past May from Tennessee. Uh, regretfully going through the other things people have, and no commencements, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Although they think they're going to do something coming up here next month, so we're working on that. That's nice. And then our youngest is also a girl, and she is a sophomore at Ohio State. Awesome. Yeah. Boy, man, we're getting old. Like, <laughs> I remember just when they were little altar servers. I know. Like, Crazy. We yeah. see pictures of Natalie and Nathan. Like yeah, that. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's great. Uh, and then to my left, uh, maybe your right, maybe the center <laughs> of your screen, I'm not exactly sure, but this is Jeff and Alyssa Stinson. Um, what do we got going on in your house? <laughs> chaos? Is that how you describe yeah, it? Less chaos than you used to. Less chaos you used to. We've got a, uh, a son who's a senior, uh, at, or senior freshman at Notre Dame, senior last year. Yeah. Uh, time just... He never graduated. He never really graduated. Freshman at Notre Dame, uh, a daughter who is a junior in high school, and then a son who's an eighth grader. Mm -hmm. So we're you still on all the other... Yeah, we do. We've got the college, middle school, high school. There's a lot of angst mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a lot of different things we're doing. Well, I thought to myself, who could I invite that has the flavor of life and all of children <laughs> want? Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I teach preschool, so, yes, so, we, so we've got the whole thing. Yeah. 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 That's why you're married to Jake. Right? Yep. Yes. 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 It's, there's nothing more like dealing with five-year-olds than dealing with 47-year-olds. Or teenagers. Thing. It's, or it's all, it's all exactly pretty much. Yeah. Changeable. That is a so hundred percent right. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so as you're watching tonight, as you're just sitting in on this discussion, please feel free to go ahead and type your comments into YouTube. Uh, Libby is over in the production area, and she will go ahead and pass a little note off to us to ask some questions. Uh, I know that the first question that we already got tonight is one that uh, we all have to think about a little bit, and mm -hmm. I'll give a little bit of theology behind it, uh, but. It is really just, what are we journeying toward together? How do we make this happen um, in, in order to take care of each other? So let's just go right to the heart of the matter. How do we parent in the pandemic? I mean, I, I think that for us, we had a senior last year. We thought March was gonna come, everything was gonna shut down, and in May, we would be back to prom and we would have graduation and the summer was going to be great. Mm -hmm. She went to school, she got to school, her classes went virtual. Um, and the same thing, Nathan is a theater major and he just did his first show this year all online with masks mm -hmm. and acting across from people. Now, these are all first world problems, yeah. right? I mean, we, a lot of people have a lot of other things that they're dealing with. but. 
we have to talk about what our children are feeling, that no matter what situation they're in, their feelings aren't wrong. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you have found in parenting in the pandemic that you think that we all might need to look at or things that have worked for you at all? Um, I, I guess I listen more. Like I keep thinking I'm gonna solve it and I just have to listen to what her point of view is. Right. I keep thinking, well, oh, just, you know, go out and, you know, meet somebody or just, you know, go to the, but you can't, you know, so, you know, I'll meet someone on your floor, but everybody's, you know, so I just, I just listen more. Like yeah. I, I try to put her shoes on and I think it's helped her too. Cause I think she sees my perspective too. So it's trying to find, I it's a know. deeper conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I know it's horrible, but I think she's growing mm -hmm. cause she was very, um, independent or yeah. now she's being more independent and trying to she's trying to figure out i think she's giving herself more credit than what she had sure than things she sure. would have realized yeah but um well i would say that this uh class of seniors uh this year and freshmen uh, in college mm -hmm. currently there were seniors last year i think that they already have a leg up on understanding disappointment mm -hmm. and maybe something that uh whether their community is a bubble or maybe they haven't seen some of the things that go on in the outside world, I think certainly the pandemic has opened up our children to experience disappointment. Mm -hmm. in you know, uh, whether it's middle school, mm -hmm. elementary school, there's got to be some kind of disappointment, um, even though we don't have elementary school kids anymore. I mean, maybe you guys can speak to that, the disappointments in your eighth grader that, you know, has come across, you know, with can't get together with friends and, you know, sports has probably hindered some and those kinds of things. Have you found that to be the case? You, you know, it's interesting. I, I have found that the younger they get, the more resilient they are to change, um, right? So whereas we may mourn some of those losses, <clears throat> honestly, I think our, our eighth grader, who was a seventh grader at the time, loved the early part of the pandemic because he was done with school in two hours and then was out <laughs> skateboarding and scootering and doing all that stuff. So for him, he just didn't really notice it as right. much. And uh, for our son, who was a senior, it was big, right? As you can relate to with Natalie, that there was, oh my goodness, like, I don't have prom. I don't have graduation. I don't. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but one of the things that I think has helped me has helped us is you know we don't hold too tightly to things mm. anymore right that when we go through life we hold tight to the things that are important our faith and our family and but boy when it comes to those events we just walk through life with open hands mm -hmm. and know that hey god's got a plan within this and we gotta roll with it yeah and so but you're right it does it, it helps you define especially for them what's most important right? what do we really truly value within well, and I think that for parents, we've kind of have gone through phases that more people were playing board games together, more people were eating dinner together. They were making the most out of this coming together at the beginning yeah. of March, right? March into April, and uh, people found a newfound relationship in their family. But at the same time, I bet you, and we're guilty of it, when our kids come home, we don't we're not playing board games. We're not making sure that everybody's eating dinner together. They're a little bit more angry about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that that would be, how do we address the anger? Does anybody else go through that? Like, it's just they're angry. Pause, you're offline. Ooh, okay. Thank you. Um, well, I think that one of the things that, that I definitely learned was um, allowing grief to be a part of the conversation because those losses that our kids are missing and I feel like we are actually in a lot of ways we are so grateful for what has actually opened up for our kids and mm. what they are allowed to do this year and so there's a heck of a lot of gratitude mm -hmm. in our house um, this fall because our son who's in college is doing classes in person and our two younger kids were able to have a full cross country season and mm -hmm. um, we were able to go and watch them and all of those things that aren't happening everywhere. And so, right. but I just like looking back on um, Tyler's, you know, lack of a graduation or lack of a prom, it was being okay in that moment to give him permission to grieve and for mm. us to have permission to grieve that his, his graduation that we've been waiting for, for, 
all of these years and may have been more important to us in some ways to see him actually receive his diploma and receive the accolades that that he'd been working towards right. um that was a huge loss and it was it was a good moment when it kind of finally dawned on us that we need to be not just say oh but you're getting this thing and it could be worse <laughs> oh, that, that was, was me yeah. Yeah. that was me I you did listen that more. You listen and more. I think yeah. that that is and I think that that going forward as you know I think that there is there's a level of gratitude but then there's a level of fatigue as well and then all of a sudden as more things are being taken away or as we we approach the holiday season and things won't look the same and we won't be able to have the same traditions then it's that it that conversation opens up again of like yeah this is hard this well, you, really is you know it, well you learn two things you learn number one what matters to them mm-hmm. right you you know you take away things that they think are stupid or that teenagers don't appreciate mm-hmm. so number one you find out it really is important to them <laughs> sorry kids we figured that out <laughs> uh, but secondly listening to you talk Alyssa that. I think so many people feel alone. Mm-hmm. Like so many people feel like this is only our kids that act this oh, way. Yeah. This is only mm-hmm. us this, that feels this way. Mm-hmm. And when we begin to have this type of conversation and why this is so important for me is that you find out everybody's in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Right. Everybody has the same fears. Mm-hmm. And anger, grief, all these things that we put into a box we're blessed when our kids are vocalizing it. Yeah, it, it's Definitely. it's such a key thing to express that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you, you you've got to go through. You can't keep it bottled up right. inside. And mm-hmm. I think for a lot of us, you know, we're so used to as parents like telling kids what to do. It's hard for us to take that pause and learn to listen, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And to allow it to come out and say it's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, because before everything was so structured and everything like well, we'll just keep moving forward with it mm-hmm. you know now it's like yeah it's okay not to be okay and okay. trying to fix it you know I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fixer I'm a, that's, that's yeah. I'm like, I'm a listen, not a fixer I'm, I'm listening yeah. right, yeah. Right? and you can't yeah. fix it because yeah. we're in a situation right now where we have no control over those things that are taken away or those Absolutely. things and, and so letting them express that it, I have learned now yeah. that it's yeah. more important to just let them get it out even though and, and be okay that there's nothing you can necessarily do about it. Mm-hmm. And like our youngest daughter, like, and she, she knows that we feel the same way, so it makes her, eases her mind knowing that we're just as upset or obviously not in different yeah. aspects, but she realizes it's not a, much of a gap, like we're all in this. We have we're different all, fears. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's, and it's okay yours. to have, yeah. we have fears just like her, so it's like right. you're not the only one, like you, you know, we, we understand it. Like, what you're feeling is normal. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's yeah. All. You have it at your level, she has it yeah. at her level, but you're all in it together. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, Paul, have you seen a difference in your older daughter, like being out of school? Like, how does it, how, how do you see the, the reaction of a young adult who's postgraduate? Yeah, I, I was, I was going to comment on, uh, I'll go to that one. You get, yeah, you both, well, the youngest, I mean, we're just the talking. youngest, what I thought was, and Jenny said it earlier, to hear the frustration with like, in the words she said just a couple nights ago, talk, it's like, this just sucks, you know, because she's stuck on campus in a dorm and can't get out. We know, and again, we said, we want to fix it. As parents, you just want to take your pain away from your, you want to help them, you want to solve it. And you're like, no, like Jody said, we're just going to listen. But to hear her come back and say, oh, this just sucks, but she grasps it. And when you said, I like and he said, like, I think that generation, these kids will have a leg up because the adversity that they're going through, mm-hmm. she won't appreciate it today. Mm-hmm. I know she doesn't. None of us do. Now she's going to she's gonna be able to look back as this learning, this adversity, and say, you know, hey, if, if this is how that got managed. So I think this is how we're gonna manage, yeah. you know, this situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, but to ask how like Kaylee, our oldest, is you know being a teacher. I mean, she, her challenge was her very first year of teaching was last year. Mm-hmm. Great up in the uh, you know west side of Cleveland uh, with one of the breakthrough schools, kindergarten class, mm-hmm. loves it. You know, one of those you know she was born to teach, love this, and like just like that, it's just like stripped. And she's like, how do you do with it? And I think like most schools through that last two or three months, it was like. 
well, we'll try online, but how effective was that? Yeah, and we just do it. Yeah. We don't have technology. And this is, you know, low-income school. They don't even have the equipment. And right. so they manage effectively. Now that this is year two, and this is like a sustainable mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know, I think she's matured to the point that, okay, she's adapted to this is how I have to do this. Mm -hmm. um, this is the structure we're going to do. It tries to do her very best for her kids. Um, a lot so, more, and Alyssa, you probably know more than anybody of us, how much more time it takes out of her. I mean, sure. teachers have long hours to begin with when you're in person. Yeah. Comp, it just seems to double when you're and doing the technology. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. You know how hard it is to talk to a red dot all day long? <laughs> 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 it's like I say a funny story. <laughs> you're right, because of the world of Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you, they don't laugh. Your jokes. <laughs> oh, it's, it's funny, we laughed when she told us her first week was um, like she's like the first they went she's like by the end of the week she's like, well it's getting better because most of the kids are staying awake now the whole time. <laughs> and you yeah. think about how unfair and it's and you know I, we don't think about it or I certainly never give appreciation to it is these are kindergartners who are from like eight o'clock to three are supposed to be staring at a screen no chance and being listened I mean, she's like they would just her and her co-teacher would just count the number of like okay okay Greg you might want to wake up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, but she's, I think Aww. the growth she's seen is over time she's had to change and adapt how yeah. and effective. And now it's been a couple, what, a month, couple months, but it's like she's, it's very effective. Um, they, and if it's like, you know, I hear dad in the background going, I have a Zoom call. I have a Zoom call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, you, 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 got, you got two or three people yeah. all trying to use the Wi Fi that yeah. was not, nobody really thought about that. No, nobody thought about that yeah. for Zoom calls. Yeah, right. right. Uh, no. Well, you know, and, and so the sense of adversity, and, and I want to go with the flip side for just one second that I think makes this even harder. Before we get into the faith component, mm -hmm. we have a generation of young people that don't dream as much as they once used to. They're not as creative. They, they settle for what's in front of them on a screen. Mm -hmm. And number one, it isn't always virtuous. Number two, it isn't always life-giving. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so they've stopped seeing the hope of what life can produce. How do we begin, and this is a, a deeper question, but how do we begin to reinstill hope and trust for our young people that when they get through this, that there is something on the other side. I think that we're living for today, which we all need to do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but how do we keep them focused on living for the future as well in a future that we don't know what it's gonna be? And, and here's, as I give you more time to think about it, that's my job as the host. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think about post 9-11. Mm -hmm. There was no way on September 10th, 2001, that we could have any idea how the world would have changed. Mm -hmm. In December of 2019, we could have never have imagined how the world would be different today, mm -hmm. you know, 10 months later, or even three months after that. So what have we learned, or how do we begin to think, or maybe even what are the questions that we have to ask ourselves in order to figure out how to help them have some hope? I'm going to go to you, honey. I'm going to put you on the spot <laughs> because you're hiding in the corner. Yeah, uh, um, actually, it made me lose my train of thought because I was <laughs> I was thinking of something. I think we have to help direct their focus. You know, I mean, um, I think if we allow them to focus too much, it's good to listen, right, and let them get out their anger and frustration and allow them to have those feelings. But... I think that if we help try to redirect, you know, when the kids were little and, you know, redirect the behavior or whatever. So um, I think that's the first thing that came to mind was um, we need to find ways to help them focus on on positive things or like, you know, you were saying that we in the beginning people were focusing on trying to do things together that we hadn't had time to do anymore. Um, and so I was thinking that, um, you know, uh, help them come out of their rooms a little bit, <laughs> um, you know, for fun things to do. And um, I don't know, that, that, I'm not really sure I have all the answers as to what that is and what that looks like, but I just think helping f them focus on well, other good. Your two minutes is up. We have to mute your mic. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> lucky you. Sorry. Yeah. You, you know, 
know, I mean, it's, it's interesting we talk about, you know, what are we as, you know, faith-filled parents, what drives mm-hmm. our hope? Mm-hmm. Right, what's important to us, and mm-hmm. you know, in this mm-hmm. time of uncertainty, how do we bring that to our kids? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I, I look at the the challenges of the pandemic. Right. You know, it it, it separated us from church for how long? Ten mm-hmm. weeks, whatever. We were on virtual services, and, mm-hmm. and many people still are. Many people that, yeah. still are. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, like that was something that was like super important for Alyssa and I with the kids. Was all right. We want to make sure that we are keeping Christ central in what we're doing within our households mm-hmm. so that they understand that there's something bigger and there's a bigger hope to be had mm-hmm. than just all the stuff. Hey, it doesn't mean we're not disappointed that we didn't have a prom, we didn't have a graduation. We didn't, we're allowed to be disappointed with that, but mm-hmm. like our hope is bigger mm-hmm. and this right. is why, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's a, I actually see a lot for this generation of kids, a a level of resiliency that they'll have in the mm-hmm. future that we never had, mm-hmm. right? Because we never had to experience stuff like this, right? Mm-hmm. This wasn't stuff that until we, you know, until you had 9-11, you know, when the world kind of changed a little bit, yeah. you know, this is a group, though, that has seen a lot of craziness in a very short period of time and keeping them centrally focused on God and that being a core central part of our family was really important. Right. I heard a lot of great stories. Sorry to interrupt yeah, you, Jeff, no. but you made me think of some really great stories that I heard of um, how parents would, everybody would get dressed up, even though mass was online, yeah. or, you know, church services were online, and people would, you know, get, I, I even saw a, a video of, they they actually went out of their house and went around the back and went in the back. <laughs> where the TV was, and, you know, in the back. <laughs> kids aren't young so you know it was maybe not as easy or whatever for um you know for for them to really get into yeah. that but i thought that was really neat you know some yeah. of the pictures and the videos of, of people dressing up and watching and standing and singing at home because yeah. you could do it at home right. um, you know because you're all together um i just i really thought that was neat some people lit candles by the tv i saw yeah. that too like on either side of the tv so some neat stories about keeping them focused Absolutely. on it's just as important at home you don't necessarily Necessarily have to go in your pajamas, like right. everybody's like, "Hey, I'm just gonna lean back," and, you know, we went <laughs> no. but made it still important. It Absolutely. was a central thing, like you say about yeah. focusing and keeping them focused on, you know, just because it's at home doesn't mean it has to be. Absolutely. Um, now I feel guilty. We're like, this is cool. I mean, I'm sitting here like in, you know, yeah. not dressed up for church. <laughs> and I'm like, this is kind of nice. It's relaxing, you mm-hmm. know, and which is true. You're not found alone. Yourself standing when you're supposed to stand sitting and like I remember our youngest was still at home and we're looking at each other like we're supposed to stand right you know like right. can we sit <laughs> say, how does this work right right and now that you know we've been back open um yeah. you know it's been great personally I mean I agree I'm physically being there mm-hmm. uh, at the physical contact right. that they don't yeah you know even really know about um and I think in addition to our faith uh you know I think that one of the ways that we help them is that we have to help them understand history. You know, when I had a, a big business disaster 11 years ago, 12 years ago, I read a lot about the, the Great Depression mm-hmm. and about how families got through. So when we were going through this financially hard time, what was it that people did when they didn't have any money? Like, you know, like, then that was like the whole world. But the books that I read, mm-hmm. everybody came closer together. Mm-hmm. That's what worries me more about this pandemic than anything, is that we're separating. We're retreating from church. Mm -hmm. We're retreating from being together for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And everything that our kids love is being taken away from them. Mm -hmm. So we can look at history, and we can say, look at all these people that came through, and out of these generations became the greatest generations, because they overcame some type of hardship. The hard part when it comes to faith, though, is that you told me that if we prayed that God's the center of our family, and I don't feel okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that becomes a big sticking point. Um, and Alyssa, you might even have some insight in just working with younger children that how do we once again get to that crossroad of the innocence that I trust anything that you're going to say 
versus whatever you say is wrong. Somewhere <laughs> there has to be a gray area between four and 28. <laughs> <laughs> someone listens crazy. to someone, yeah. right? right? Well, no, it pretty much happens, but four to 28. Okay. I do think that, that for, our, for our family and our circumstances that it's so funny because my my kids laugh at me sometimes because every once in a while they're like, "Mom, you prayed for st- you prayed for the wrong thing again." Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a family joke. We went to Guatemala. There was actually I was saying that we weren't suffering enough, and then everybody really, really started suffering, oh. and <laughs> there was a lot of food poisoning. And they're like, "You prayed for suffering, like you actually prayed for suffering." Help, you know. And so so they kind of started. <laughs> Threatening we that maybe I pray for you. Can bring this song? Yeah. But I, but, I know. So the week before everything got shut down, I actually wrote every event that we had on our calendar with the seventh, the first time our, our middle schooler was doing sports for school and a, a sophomore and a senior. I had 57 separate events that we were supposed to go watch our children do something. In a week? No, from March until oh. the end of the season, oh, okay. seven. Wow. So I was like, I don't even know how this happens. I We are way too busy. Well, how, when are we going to spend time together before Tyler goes to college? And then it's like, oh, okay, God. Yeah. He said, okay, never mind. Exactly. <laughs> Wipe it all out. And You're about to kill each other. That all being said, yeah. We, yeah. we did have time to sit and have conversations that we hadn't we totally intended to and we wanted to and we desired to yeah. but we didn't have time to for many years yeah, yeah. and so sure. that 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 pause button was a big deal and the really sitting and finding a way to draw your child out of their room finding a you know, I mean even if you have and and I don't I don't know that the world is still to the routine to resume right. because it felt good and right and good and, and it is separation is good. Kids going sure. and doing their own things is right. good. Jeff and I having time alone <laughs> together every once in a while yes. without kids around is good. Right. Yeah. Um, but the but then what things do we want to make sure remain mm-hmm. and those times of sitting around the table, having a meal together. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the funny thing is a lot of people haven't done it yet, but going out to dinner mm-hmm. for the first time as a family after right. not being out to dinner. Who ever thought that would be exciting? Oh my gosh, it was so fun. Cool. It was like the greatest yeah, moment. We're like, we're like, we're like, we're like, we're in a restaurant. This is great. <laughs> yeah. you instantly become your dog? Like, I think we're going to the park. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. I know this one. Oh, and you're like, I get, I got the club. Yeah. Like, no, and we all relaxed into a conversation that was so life-giving for all of us. But I just think, I mean, I just think the more we keep talking to our kids and mm-hmm. the more we keep asking questions and encouraging them to, and sharing our feelings that, that exactly what you said, I feel the same way too. Yeah. I'm frustrated about this yeah. too. I feel this loss too. You know, that's a good question though that you bring that up. Like how much do you how much reality do you really share, you know, with the younger ones versus the older ones? I mean, we've always tried to be pretty honest about things that are happening all through, not just now, but, you know, all through as they were growing up so that they didn't feel afraid or, you know, that they kind of, in the best way that you could explain it to whatever their age group was, um, how much do you feel like um, any of you that it's, how honest do we get as far as our feelings if we're really feeling hopeless right. or if we're really feeling really afraid to go out even? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because you're talking about feelings, right, and, and how they're feeling. And, and I think it's, you can, no one's feelings are ever wrong, right? They, right. they just are. Right. And so, but when you know someone's feeling like you're feeling and you know someone has that same level of angst and emotion, there's a connection. The, yeah. the forms at that point, right? And mm-hmm. so we've tried to be really honest with our kids, is probably less when they were younger. Um, there was a couple Bible verses that applied more to when they were younger. But within it, like as our children have gotten older, it's like, hey, listen, buddy, I feel the exact same way you do right now. Yeah. And like, that's okay, because I think what they're worried about, what I see with our kids is 
they're worried that they're the only ones. Mm -hmm. right? They're worried they're the only ones that are feeling like this. And you're like, no, no, like, mom and dad feel like this. Like, exactly, like, <laughs> over here, like, this is exactly. So, so let me ask you about that, and Paul and Jody, feel free to jump in, too, is that when we're trying to raise our kids mm -hmm. virtuously, mm -hmm. when we're trying to raise our kids in faith, I feel like we're f swimming upstream anymore. Yeah. I think that that's the difference that you talked about, that you said things are a little bit different. I think one of them is going from church attendance uh, in the Catholic faith that was at over 50% and now on average is less than 20. Mm -hmm. uh, communities that did everything together versus communities where everybody has 57 things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our kids, maybe like yours, always felt a little different. We were the family that did a lot of stuff together. Yeah. We were the family that held faith. And it wasn't just because I was in ministry. It was just that that's who we were. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. That defines us. How do we help them get over that, even in college? Because, you know, Natalie had a friend. It was really cool. She had a little saint uh, keychain, uh, a little tiny saint. And her friend was so excited because she's like, oh, my gosh. Like, do you want to come to Bible study? You want to like, I found someone like me. Yeah. You know, but it made Natalie feel good, not because she was invited, but I think because somebody was just like her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and to encourage them to seek out that faith so that it can become their faith, mm -hmm. right? As they get older, right? When they're younger, it's kind of your faith, mm -hmm. right? It's the family faith. We go to church mm -hmm. and everything like that. But, you know, as they go to college, it's like, Listen, this has to become yours, mm -hmm. right? You have to own this. You have to find the, you know, do you know where the church is on uh, campus? Do you <laughs> know if there's a group of kids who do Bible studies or yeah. stuff like that? And, and like, that, that's, like, you know, ways for us to encourage them, but also praying for them, right? You know, I look at my mom, like, I was, like, a, I was an uglehead for the first 35 years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one. Yeah. This is like years What's the list of things? Yeah, exactly. It's like, you're very yeah. Not the first thing, but the last thing. Yeah, but I know my mom was praying that whole way through. Yeah. And she's so just a, an amazingly godly yeah. woman, and I know those prayers had an impact. Yeah. And I think we as parents, we forget, like we always say, like, you know, well, I'll pray for you as if it's like some offhanded, mm -hmm. I'll, you know, no, 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 like we're praying to the God of the universe, like, mm -hmm. please yeah. ignite the faith in my children. And I think that that's one thing that comes out always when our kids are struggling is that, um, number one, Jeff and I read the Bible a lot. And we lean on the Bible a lot. We lean on scripture a ton. And so, you know, I can't always be pulling out a scripture verse for every problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember any of them. Hold on, you know, a couple of standbys in there. And then those moments that it, that, you know, there's, and the, Trusting the Holy Spirit, I think, is the, is a huge yeah. thing. Of, mm -hmm. of And not being afraid. Not being afraid to say, you know, when I am struggling with a situation that I feel uncertain, Philippians 4, 6, 3 is, is what I lean on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do not be anxious about anything, but all things in prayer and supplication. Mm -hmm. give, you know, and so... You did that very well. Well, yeah, I, 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 I actually... You practiced before we came Tried to bookmark it. I tried to bookmark it. I literally opened Jeff's Bible to bookmark it, and I turned to the right page. So that's... Oh, awesome. yeah. I love that. Yeah. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. don't we all parents so many times find ourselves feeling anxious because we don't know if we don't have the right answer yeah. or we don't we But can't. Google is a beautiful, a beautiful Bible yeah. teacher because all <laughs> you have really to do is. literally is yeah. look up mm -hmm. scripture for um, somebody Some who is struggling, yeah. Stri scripture yeah. for encouragement, scripture, mm -hmm. and yeah. you... You can find the top 10, you can find the top 50, you can find the really pretty pictures that you can screenshot, and, and sometimes that visually yeah. is the best way to talk to, a, talk to a teenager or, you know, to a little one. And, but I think that just, and it's not necessarily always about solving the problem in that moment, it's about modeling it for the future. Well, and that's very true because there's always two things that are said to me anywhere that I travel. And number one is that I really wish my husband would have been here. That's the number one thing that I hear across.
across the country at events. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that I'm here to figure out how to get my kids to come back to church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? So you bring up the point. Number one, uh, if we are attending church, uh, specifically as Catholic Christians, if we're receiving the Eucharist, uh, other denominations of Christianity fed by the word, mm -hmm. if we stay in community and we bring that to our children, they are never further away from the church than us, mm -hmm. right? So just because they don't necessarily set foot inside that physical building, we're giving them the living model and the behavior and I think that some of it is a societal issue with young people who confuse the human aspect of church with the divine aspect mm -hmm. of church mm -hmm. and all authority yeah. right now, right? Because it's like, you prayed for this, we got to suffer. You prayed for this, and, <laughs> and God took away your that's job. If, so you read, if you read the Bible, well, that's what it is. That is what God that. tells you. If you're watching, that's not true. Just, yeah. just, <laughs> stop reading the Bible. Hey, I say, okay. do not, do, do not think. You know, if anything is guaranteed, suffering is guaranteed. Or Jesus, yeah. Jesus says. Yeah. You know, God says yeah. through the Bible. Read it backwards. Start with Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> And yes. so right. we are not living for this world. Mm -hmm. we but how do you tell somebody that's 16 we're not and, living for this world? And this is what, like, I, I don't know what those right words are. Mm -hmm. Right? They're, they're not. They're but, right. like, this is, this is what I've, I've always loved, right? So this is from uh, the letter of St. James, chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. let him ask God, who gives to all men generously and without reproaching, and it will be given him. Like that's at the end of the day, like I, I, I kind of feel like a lot of times when I'm parenting like Moses, like, uh, hey God, I, I'm, I have no idea what to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I have no idea what to say in this moment. And God's like, you know, he says to Moses, he goes, just literally just show up and I will give you the right words. And so like that's my prayer when I'm dealing with my children in a situation that I don't know how to handle. Mm -hmm. Is that, Lord, please give me your wisdom and your words in this situation, mm -hmm. or maybe just even the willing, the ability to listen to it so that I can help out. And so, like, I feel helpless as a parent a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's in those moments where I'm like, I don't know the right thing to say. I don't know the, the right way to say it even. Lord, please give me your words within it. And, like, that's, I think that's what we have to lean in on. And, and trust him who loves our children more than we do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That he has a plan for them also, so let's ask him. And do you find, Jody and Paul, do you find a lot of differences? We have a boy and a girl, so it's, it's <coughs> different that when you put that in the mix, do you, they all have their own personalities. Oh, yeah. So they probably deal with that very differently. What, what are some of the things that you find in trying to deal with them all separately? It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, you know, I always like the couple expressions. It's like, you know, <clears throat> you've heard it before, but I try to live it. It's like, you know, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Yeah. So I always try to let actions speak louder. It's, Which I'm not, St. Francis did not say, don't live that life. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> See, I mean, I, yeah. I, I gave him credit for a long time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is that, oh, the wrong one? He, no, no, he said the right thing. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. Well, no, I mean, that's just it. It's like I try not to put on a falsehood to it, but, yeah. you know, I, I do think, without going way off topic, I do think, you know, it's, it's probably, um, I just do think that a good, strong male presence mm -hmm. in the faith is an important piece. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I look at, you know, I, I grew up with the divorced parents, divorced family, my dad kind of left the church. I mean, he moved physically away, so I didn't really see much of him anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, like from middle school on mm -hmm. and died at a young age. But my mom was our faith leader, right? And, and wonderful. And, and you, you said something made me smile when you were saying, well, like, you know, she'd always say, oh, well, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. And, and when you're young, you're like, I don't want your prayers. I need the money. I need, <laughs> I need, I need, I need, I need tangible things. Yeah. But, but I don't think I have to read the talents in scripture. Where <laughs> you go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they never left, you know, in the heart, right? And the seeds were planted. And, and, and it's what I just try to do with both of us is the same way. It's just sort of like, listen, I don't talk down to them. You know, I let them do their own and just let them know. I mean, we're, 
we're on a journey together, you know, and um, we hear you. That's been, a, it, it's a great segue for, for this, and we'll stay on yeah. the same subject. Two minutes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, but I love, so one of the things that as Catholic Christians, we're all Catholic, there's no secret to that. I mean, I'm not here to preach Catholicism, but that's where we're going to go to for the foundation and tradition of our faith, and we should know why we believe what we believe. And so one of the, I, people that know me, like I'm a geek when it comes to the catechism of the Catholic Church, because I, why do we believe that? Where in scripture does it say that? What, what is our role? What is our duty? And when I'm lost, because I do get lost, mm -hmm. because I'm, I, I'm confused. Sometimes yeah. I don't want to hear it's God's plan. I don't right. care, right? And Jesus wept twice in the garden mm -hmm. when he didn't want to accept the Father's will. But even before that, he wept for Lazarus. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an entire line in the Bible. Yeah. I forget what it is, but I know it's verse 24 in John. I don't forget the chapter, but try it. You'll find yeah. everything. Yeah. But it's... Isn't, isn't it just Jesus wept? Jesus wept. That's the, the whole line. That's the whole line. It's two lines. Jesus, Jesus wept. Jesus. And so I think when we find the compassion in our children when we're real with them, and here's what the Catechism says specifically, and there's a whole thing. So here, here's what I'll say. This is funny because all of the parenting tips that come from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, maybe not all, but a lot, they're all found when it's explaining the fourth commandment, which is what? Honor your mother and father. Honor your mother and father. Now they're going to tell us how to take care of our kids at the same time. I think <laughs> it's a bait and switch. You want to know how to take your kids? And then they're like, no, you have a responsibility too. And I'm like, well, really? Um, but this is paragraph 2222. And if you if are keeping score at home uh, and you go from 2221 to 2237, 16 short paragraphs, that's all about parenting and family and our duties. But here's what 2222 says. It says, parents must regard their children as children of God and respect them as human persons, showing themselves obedient to the will of the Father in heaven. They educate their children to fulfill God's law. Okay. Right? It doesn't say anything. Yes, we're the first catechist, and the next paragraph will tell you that you have the responsibility to educate your children but I'm glad that this comes before that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because words are empty. Mm -hmm. Where, where does, what does that link to? What verse? Uh, this links to, it's actually not linked to a verse. Because it's funny, because one of the verses that I had coming in here was, because uh, we just read Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 talks about children and parents at the beginning, and it's verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you talked about it, right? Dad, dads are, like, really important from a faith standpoint. You get so many men who just advocate it, right? They just don't even step up and do it, and they put it on the shoulders of, of the, the mom to do it. Like, as men, we're required to be there, mm -hmm. right? Like, and, and to walk in it, right? That authenticity so that when our children look at it, they go, wow, my dad really believes in that, really lives by that, and that's... One really of the strongest things I ever heard in relation to that was, uh, I forget who it was, but they were talking about when your kids talk back to mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. and the kid was talking back to the mother, and the husband stepped up and said, you will not talk to my wife that way. Mm -hmm. And it was like a defending <clears throat> yeah. of the vow, right? Mm -hmm. And so... I know if I was a kid, my dad, my dad never said that, but if I was a kid and my dad said that, I'd be like, holy mackerel, I think you might knock me out. I don't know what's going to happen. But, <laughs> but you would remember that. That's a remember yeah. it for the rest of your life yeah. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of moment. Well, and it shows them the way you respect your wife. You know, you don't say mom, you know, don't talk to mom that way. Some people say that. That's yeah. fine, too. But in the fact that the importance of your marriage Absolutely. and your partnership with each other yeah. but that's hard though when the other person the other you know whether it's male or female doesn't feel the same what does isn't on right. the same faith journey as you are that makes it really that's difficult, difficult. And yeah. i know i have friends that have situations like that where for sure it's not as easy because they don't get that support or backup yeah. you know i don't know well, then we got to go to saint monica right mm -hmm. who prayed for mm -hmm. years for mm -hmm. 
her husband to be converted and not till the year prior to his death. But she was also the mother, the mother of St. Augustine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. taught by St. Ambrose. Mm -hmm. So like, it's a crazy web we weave. Right. <laughs> she prayed for years for her son. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. One of the he was a life greatest, of debauchery. Right? Greatest saints ever <laughs> yeah. after his life of debauchery. Mm -hmm. Because so. his, his, maybe I'll be that way. So you're saying there's hope. There's a chance. There's a chance. There is hope. So before we, we go into some of the other things about what we can do as parents, here's the uh, here's one of the questions that we had that, that came in via email. And you know when people say that, usually in a show, it's like they made it up because yeah. they needed some buffers. We actually got this question. Uh, and I love the person who sent it to me. But it said, um, how do we explain creation when science and the Big Bang is all they hear in school? Um, you know, this is important when we talk about scripture mm -hmm. to explain creation and the marriage of science and religion, right? We were so busy trying to keep them separate. Uh, I know that I didn't give you this answer up front, but what are some of the initial thoughts that come to mind that how do we help? Because we're, we're fighting against the school system in many things. Mm -hmm. uh, we truly are. And I'm not blaming anybody for that. I, I don't know where that problem comes from. So if we even take creation, which I'm more than happy to jump on that grenade for everybody, <laughs> but, um, but how do we explain to our children things that are being contradicted in school? Mm -hmm. And whether it is family time, whether it is, my daughter gets assignments in college that are due on Sundays. She has some due Saturday night and some due Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. When does she get to stop? Right. When is family dinner time? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they they would have a day off and they still had practice for school. So, mm -hmm. uh, how do we help? How do we do this with our kids that are hearing contradictory messages from people that we've told them to respect? Mm -hmm. That's tough. Yeah, that is difficult. The, the the Big Bang one is fascinating. Whoever this is, I do have the world's greatest little pamphlet on this thing, and I can't remember everything that the guy said. It's it's actually phenomenal. If you find it, I'll send it to them. Okay, I got the yeah, yeah. There was a book, too, that our priest had talked about, that it was a great book, but I couldn't find it. I was looking for where what the name of this book was. This is literally, it's like 40 pages. This guy wrote it for his employees. The reason why, or something, something like this. It was written in like 1918. 1918? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like in New Zealand. And the, the greatest thing the guy said was, he goes, basically, he, he, he said that, you know, it's been updated as the years have gone along. They've added the scientific facts to it and everything. So whoever added it. So like basically, the statistical chances of us developing from like a piece of whatever to an organized human being is the equivalent of the blowing up the, Web, the uh, Webster's Dictionary and it reassembling itself back into a book. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like, he's like, it's it's going to go all over the place. It's not going to just settle back into, you know, a cohesive narrative. It's place. Yeah. Right, right. And so it was, it was just fascinating. He had all these facts and statistics behind mm. it. It was phenomenal. And I, the best thing that I heard on that is, um, and it's funny because Claire, Claire struggled with this for a, a long time. And we used to walk on the beach and talk about how, how do we know and, and, you know, just at, and I finally said there was like an Ask the Priest Day at PSR, and, <laughs> and Father Adam was hosting, and I said, Ask Father Adam a question. <laughs> and he, <laughs> and I he, I mean, he was he was like, we believe that science and you know, so I can't remember his exact answer, but the best way that I've heard it that I can relate it back to was that the beginning of the Bible, there was wavy line history. And then there's a point in time in the Bible where you can time t start yeah, time stamping. Yeah. And so there is a point where you know historically these dates happened. You can go back. You can right. find the dates. You can, or, right. you know, like within. Mm -hmm. at, but at the beginning of the Bible, it is wavy line history. So it is actually that, um, that you know, the Catholic Church doesn't, teach that you take it word for word. You take it right. literarily. So you you read the words and you draw from it. Well, but you know, even scientists have come back to 
that there is a God particle. Yeah. yeah that's for true. lack of a better word, they're not saying as we say God, but it's this God particle that, that in the mind's eye of a creator, like, like you said, everything falls into existence. In the, yeah, in the place, in the exact mm -hmm. place. And you think about it, the thing I love about the Big Bang is you can explain everything up until, like, Right, the before. bang, the bang, right? <laughs> like, can't explain the bang, right. unless there's a god particle or a god, a god who was in his lab one day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <it's over. laughs> I have a recent. Uh, well, I I have a boss who's an atheist. I mean, he is not currently; it's a previous place, and would always fight the science. And even he. Um, at the end basically comes back and he's just like, you know, he has there's science to prove everything, but eventually get to that point of like, well, maybe there is a, a God that did that first thing, you know, but because he can't explain it. You can't you can explain get science it. all the way back to a certain point, but you can't. And mm -hmm. he's not active. I mean, he's... Doesn't give us purpose for anything. Mm -hmm. And we as human beings, I do know that the Catechism tells us that we are made by God, mm -hmm. for God, mm -hmm. to return to God. Mm -hmm. Apart from Him, we can do nothing. Mm -hmm. If you think about people that don't have God as part of their life, mm -hmm. there is nothing to explain even the prayers that don't come true. I mean, like, if you were a lukewarm prayer, I don't even know if that's a word, but if you're lukewarm in that, and it doesn't come out to the outcome that you wanted or expected, well, now I'm angry. Mm -hmm. Now I feel duped. But to know that in creation, that God not only created everything for us, created it for Adam to enjoy, but when we didn't understand, he sent himself mm -hmm. to experience it the same way that mm -hmm we experience it and to me there's a lot of it that rides within that mm -hmm. for all of our kids like at some point you have to decide who you are and god bless you that's one of the best barking they're in the audience they have a live studio audience <laughs> most people i've talked to in like eight months <laughs> But no, I, I think that that question mm -hmm. is the same question that comes to why all the bullying? Why all the depression? Mm -hmm. Shh. I don't know, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> but, not sure. but why all the loneliness? Yeah. Why, why is that existing? So we have to know that God is at the foundation and that science on its own doesn't solve our problems. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's it, that's the you know the big thing right where you know good things ha or bad things happen to good people right what? you know if we right. if we look at it, you know every word within the Bible here not everyone but you know that whole suffering and perseverance and you know it's Paul who yeah Paul who wanted the thorn removed three times and God said no I'm sufficient for you I think it's really hard for a lot of people to accept but it's all because what we're aiming for here isn't here right mm -hmm. it's what comes after that's mm -hmm. most important within that and mm -hmm. that's those are tough concepts to yeah. get your mind around probably to most most of the ages that we're talking about yep. you know kindergarten through yep. um yeah through college age and young adults yeah. i remember it um i think it was last year's lead me event right and forget the saint ignatius teacher yeah jim hogan that gave his talk on you know how he challenged one of his students who was an atheist and he's just like hey just give me and i'm going to butcher the paraphrase but it was very profound because at the end the answer was there's hope i mean what what are we here for right and if it's like you know do you believe um there's no evil or, you know, do you believe? Well, matter without purpose is meaningless. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you believe that your life is meaningless? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of the summary that Some, you yeah. put in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was a great challenge to that student, you know, that he, that he mentioned in that talk. Uh, and, and it just took me away. It's just like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to have conversations with people, you know, because I'm not a good influencer of, you know, why you should do things or believe it this way. I try to do, like, you know, when necessary, you know, you'll preach, but when necessary, use words type yeah. approach and right. just lead by example. But 
you gave a good example of that, and it stuck. It's just like, yeah, there's there's not hope if we're not if there's not something beyond this. Mm -hmm. um, what are you living for? I mean, what is it? Right. Because the, one thing you know is we're physically not going to be here forever. Right. Right. So right. if you don't believe, wow, what, you know, what, what are you what are you what are you doing? You know, what's this all for? What's the purpose? Well, it can be a slippery slope. Yeah. Well, it is, and, and so that's usually where we culminate. So in this last 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, what are, what are some of the practical tips that, that we can give to other people? And, and honey, I'll ask you, I'm going to start it off, and I'll, I'll ask you, you're a big believer in traditions mm -hmm. and, and making sure that we do those things. I mean, like I grew up, I didn't eat dinner at the dinner table. We all ate at TV trays in mm -hmm. front of the TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we got married, she was like, no, we're eating as a family. And I fought it. I hated it. Mm -hmm. Now I sit at the dinner table and everybody leaves me. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But just talk a little bit about traditions and, and how we view them and, and what they mean and what you've seen. Well, I think, you know, we've all kind of brought it up that I think prayer is a real important mm -hmm. tradition to try to start when they're young. Mm -hmm. You know, we start with the prayer at bedtime yeah. and we start with prayer at, at mealtime, you know, and that kind of thing and, and help them understand those. But, um, you know, as they get older, the prayers get more real. Mm -hmm. You know, they're more, uh, you know, it's not just a cute little thing that rhymes that we teach them right. and memorize, you know, the prayers at, at Mass. But I think um, a lot going along with helping teaching them how prayer is important, it needs to then evolve into um, us being the example of prayer for them. And mm. so, you know, finding those times, you know, like you mentioned, Alyssa, and about, you know, they know that mom's going to have some prayer time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I did that enough. I'm at that point where I keep going, oh, didn't do that. <laughs> but, you know, where... That's every parent, but, yeah, That's what I mean, I know. That's you become a grandparent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. But I mean, you know, that if they saw, I, you know, I think back and think, oh, if they had seen me more often say, mom is going to take her prayer time for the next half hour, you know, give me just a little bit of alone time. You know, maybe I said I needed the alone time, but, you know, right. but I didn't put it together with prayer. So right. being the example right. in addition to that and creating those, um, you know, helping to establish those traditions of sure. it's not just prayer isn't just for dinner and it's not just for bedtime, yeah. but it's for any time. It's for all the time. One that they do see in our family mm -hmm. um, is that we still have Sunday dinner with my mom. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, you know, we're blessed that, that my mom is with us and that as often as I'm in town or they're in, you know, home from college that we, mm -hmm. and they together. make it a point that That's awesome. mm -hmm. they want to be part of that mm -hmm. and they get to see their cousins, but they ask about it. Mm -hmm. um, how about you guys? Do you have any specific traditions or anything that you've done like on a regular basis that now as you've gotten older that you see? This carry holiday. through. Yeah, I mean, well, holidays, but. yeah, I mean, I make a point. Somebody turned me on years ago, right? I kind of waited too late. I think, I feel like it, but it's never too late is the message, mm -hmm. right? It's like, but no, I always take a daddy daughter day, you know, with each of my daughters mm -hmm. individually. It's just yeah. part of my time. And okay. usually, you know, it's so around the holidays. We do shopping for their sisters or their Jody and then. And, but we also have a fun activity. We do something that they want to do, and that's evolved. You know, I used to think, I wish I'd started this earlier, but it's better, so we've been yeah. doing it now. It's awesome. Yeah. So for my, yeah, I tell you what, um, you know, you don't take enough re, um, stock in what we've done, but yeah, like to hear our kids come back and say, can we just have family game night? Can yeah. we just do family game night? And it's like, and for a while, you're like, you're like, it, was, it seemed like, sorry kids, it seemed like it was a chore, you know, like, oh, oh when you're at home. <laughs> but now, <laughs> as they've all gone yeah. out, and when they come home, it's, and we don't have to ask, do you want to have a family game night? They're right. like, you know, mm -hmm. hey, you know, what do you want to do? Can we just stay and play family game night? And that's impact. Yeah. I mean, it's, so that, we like, oh, call it a tradition. Okay, yeah, every, a game. every Christmas, I mean, one of the gifts is a game. You know, one of them gets, I guess we don't know what it is, and we end up playing that, and we pull out other ones from the past. I so they come home from college, and like, let's play Cards Against Humanity, and you're like, how about we not? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, that brings yeah. up a good point because it is uh, fun at at some point when the kids do start saying, 
hey, can we do X, Y, Z, you know, whatever yeah. it is. And Natalie came home and said she wanted to do baking, fall baking, because she remembered the, the little peanut butter ghosts that we, you know, used to make when she was younger and little donut acorns. And, you know, she came home and, and she was like, I really, I just want to bake. I just want to, you know, make all these things that I remember as a kid. And that was really um, cool because, you know, you didn't think that they were really that into it or, you know, they threw three ingredients in and then they were like not interested anymore. But actually it made more of a point than, you know, we, than we thought it did. And so I think playing with the seed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So those are the fun things that do start to come back. And, and I thought of one um, when you mentioned about church. Um, our son, who, uh, when he first went to college, did not go to church, was not going mm-hmm. to church. But when he came, but when he came home, like almost the first thing he said for Christmas is, are we going to midnight mass? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you're like, wow, uh, you can absolutely, <laughs> not ever turning that, you know, down. But I mean, it was really neat to think that, you know, right. these are some things that I want to do. I want to make sure I go to midnight mass. And that yeah. was just really cool. So, How about y'all? But you, you've done some amazing things by taking the daily readings and mm. reading those with the kids. Wait a oh. second, you integrated prayer with your children? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I want to know about she this. She stole my idea. You know, this is like, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know the Catholic Church publishes this every day? That there's like these <laughs> readings we can go through? Wait, how did you do this? <laughs> yeah, so I literally put that on the counter and I, I get, I don't, I don't even remember what it's called, but one of, just a, one of the daily missiles. Um, mm. And I... I, and it sits on the counter, and they're all bleary-eyed and whatever. I'm like, okay, here's the first for today. You know, so it's, I mean, it's literally, it is infusion. I, I don't know how much they're taking in. Yeah. We don't, we, you know, during the pandemic, it was great because we would sit at lunch, and we would do just a little bit of, like, Lexio Divino, where we would, like, be like, what stood out for you most about that? And that actually worked for about six weeks, which was a really beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it, six days. No. <laughs> <laughs> When you, so in the morning, then, in the morning before, before they leave for school, right. you just read the. I open the. I just read the I, verse. Read the, I read either the gospel or the first reading for the and day. And then what? And then I kiss them goodbye. Okay. Then they literally day. fly out the door. So you literally <laughs> just read it. They maybe yeah. listen. They maybe don't. But it's, it's sticking just, in. Yeah. The seeds yeah. But the seed is planted. It is, it is, it, I'm just so hoping, water. if nothing else, I am just hoping to instill in them. Yeah. Um, this is important. No, it is like important that. to read the Bible. That is, mm-hmm. that's what I'm hoping to instill in them. That just show, shows, like, like we were saying before, like all three daughters are totally opposite. The seed, the seed, the seed, the seed has all been planted, but they, they um, project it differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Katie's more vocal and more outwardly, you know, but it's, it's, Cool, but like we can sit back and say, okay, we planted the foundation, planted the seed, whatever. But mm-hmm. it is, it's like what? Yeah. God's got to grow it. Yeah. yeah. So right. it's like it's they, they got to figure the room. Like, exactly. It's not like this is how you're supposed to be. You and know? I and, think, and I honestly think that in our family, it is because we went through some pretty difficult times when our kids were, um, you know, three, five, and seven or you know and and on up a little bit from there and so it was and that was when God just kind of surrounded us by some beautiful angels that are Mm -hmm. on this earth and they you know they pointed us to scripture that we had never Mm -hmm. read we both we both grew up in very faithful households I was Catholic Jeff converted um when we got married and um and it, it it just for us we needed it so much that it was kind of like okay this is this is a part of what we do and so how can we make sure that our kids don't have to hit rock bottom mm-hmm. right. before they know learn where to turn mm-hmm. um, but on the uh, but on the other hand I would say if we're talking about traditions for us traveling is huge because it is just that time in a normal rhythm that you pluck everybody out and you put us all together and we actually play games together and we actually right. hang out together and we have those agent. fun dinners I had together. a travel agent one time say take a vacation every year 
even if it's just 30 minutes away when you're just camping. Like, get it out of your regroup. normal. Yeah. yeah, regroup, get out of your normal yes. life where it's just the group together. Yes. Right? right. Different surroundings, different environment. And yeah. kids listen differently in a different environment. They do. So, well, yeah. Well, and when they are, when they're, I mean, especially as they get older, when they're removed from, and when we're removed from our, all of our routines, I mm -hmm. think that it's just, reboot. it's a good yeah. time to reboot. And, and the busier we get in our lives, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not right at this moment, but as you said, the 57 things that, you know, you had on your calendar, as it starts to creep back up, mm -hmm. as we, you know, things calm down with the pandemic and that kind of thing, it's going to creep right back in there. And that's so much point. more important. Yeah, and, and, and I've talked to so many young people. Um, I always tell parents that if you ever want to be scared out of your mind, go lead a high school retreat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what your kids say when you're not around. <laughs> and I've worked with a lot of youth ministers and things that work with kids. And it's all the same at the end of the day for us as parents. Love them, mm -hmm. love them, love them. Mm -hmm. If we can love them through their mess, mm -hmm. and, and God has a wild sense of humor in, in the way that every time I'm mad at my own children or frustrated or sad for them or whatever it is, I can immediately equate that situation to how God must view me. Totally. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just like, oh. You have like trillions of kids. I got two. <laughs> and they can't even find their socks. But no, I, I mean, it, it does. It comes down to love. And are you willing to love them authentic and genuinely in their mess and in their moment? Mm -hmm. Because they're smarter than ever. And one thing that this generation knows is when you're being real mm -hmm. or when you're being full of it. Mm -hmm. And they're just wanting people who will give them the truth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. can, so, I, can I add something? Yeah, because then uh, we're going to get ready to wrap up here. Well, because I think something else is a really key thing that's important. I, I think I have learned um, as parents is that to surround yourself with other like-minded parents, okay. so it's not always so easy. Important. Not always easy to find, you know. Not easy, yes. Yeah. Not easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. But when you Values find, um, you know, but but spend some time talking to the other parents from the classroom. Mm -hmm. Get a sense of, you know. Um, I think it was important when we started um, going to school here that I wanted to find a church where uh, generally, uh, you know, they might see kids from their school. Right. Um, and, and the hope was is that we would then find parents that you know were like-minded so I think that's really important in our walk with as parents with our kids mm -hmm. and, and in the faith you know perspective that that it helps us build us up and build each other up and support each other Absolutely. in our struggles that you have someone else to talk to so important yeah and I, I, I think that that's true and if something God forbid ever happens to us mm -hmm. You know, we want people to be there mm -hmm. for our kids. So, mm -hmm. before we wrap up with a, a little bit of a, a five minute lightning. Can I round. say one more thing? No, my show. <laughs> <laughs> then I gotta follow up my show. Yeah. I got one more thing. Can you see that? this for three minutes. <laughs> this is the lightning round here. So, no, go ahead. You're the boss. It's your show. But just that, I, 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 you know, just, just sitting around this table, I, I heard several mentions of. I wish I had started that earlier. I wish I had started that earlier. But I would, I would just say, from the sounds of it, from people that I know really well that are older than me, you're always going to be their parents. And so it's, yeah. so it's funny because my dad will call me and he's like, okay, so I've been talking to my friend St. Jude and <laughs> this is going on. And like that's the way that he communicates with me still, mm -hmm. that he is praying all the time. He didn't say those things to me when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, or not in the same way or in a way that I heard them, mm -hmm. but know that it's happening now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting into my parents' car and my mom's got the rosary praying and playing and she's, you know, praying the rosary or Jeff's mom I know is praying for us every day, all of the time, as often as she can, and because we give her a lot to worry about. Um, but so I just think that that is something that we all need to take comfort in, no matter how old our kids are. Is that it's not yeah. 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 a
what are the favorite phrases? phrases. Yeah, yeah, they're not really open. Like yes. it all just yeah. exactly. There's not like a set. And it took us until we were 35 years old to really get to the point where we were like, oh gosh, we've got to figure out this adult faith that we, you know, like yeah, we've right. got to find oh. it. It's laying the, you know, that that that's that's the most important thing and keeping an open, just an open line of communication mm-hmm. with your child and letting them know that you love them no matter what. I mean, yeah. I don't know what yeah. else we can yeah. do. Like you said, love. Well, yeah, yeah it's. Well, I think that's Jesus' central message. Yeah. Well, I, I was just the, the thing I was really wanting to go after her. Go ahead. What's that? I did. I told you. You think it's a true show? <laughs> <laughs> no. In this part of Paul's segment, it's brought to you by Western Reserve. We're going to take the next thirty minutes. And, uh, no, I, I, I think there's an aura that um, it's being it's being humble, right? I mean, I like I make it. I don't try to put an aura that I have all the answers. I make it very clear with the kids that I'm on this journey with you. I mean, I've just got years on you because physically, but, and I don't, I don't talk down to them. I don't preach to them. I just mm-hmm. treat, you know, I don't know. That's been what I found to be just genuine, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just I'm not putting this, and I think maybe me growing up, it's like I'd look at my dad, you know, when he was with the family at the time, and like, well, you're the parents. You have to have all the answers when mm-hmm. I don't know it. And what I try to do is talk. I don't know all the answers. We don't. We're still learning too, right? I mean, we're, we're learning with you. We've got some years on you. We've got more experience. But um, but keep treating them, talking to them as as equals, yeah. you know, Genuine. and really just share them with, you know, maybe a little bit more experience. And, but for the most part, just talking to them as equals, not down to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think just show yeah. some, yeah. I mean, I don't do it. For, or they just do it because it's the only way. Yeah, it's, a, it's a level of respect. And don't look for that. I mean, you know, and if you have a daughter, you want her to date a guy that's going to show the same respect that, mm-hmm. you know, you showed your wife, or right. it right. will turn the other way. Mm-hmm. Correct. Right. Um, yeah. Everybody get that out? Everybody, can I go to my lightning round? <laughs> yeah, you're running around. Well, all right, I'm not okay. All right, well, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, Jody, one more. No, Jody, no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> No, Did I you really? I mean, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll talk to the sponsor. We can go an extra five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. So you mean okay with this? Just sneak it in. It's like a debate. If when I ask you a question, don't answer that question. Just go ahead. Okay. 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 If you're listening at home, the dogs they can heard in the background, it's only two of them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I can hear them. And yeah. the king is walking into the He's picture, like, I so. I wanted to. I just like to make a little noise. Everybody's, everybody's I'm king. Everybody's okay. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> hi, bud. <laughs> hi, bud. Yes. No, it's they would sleep for an hour. So here's what I want to say before we do our lightning round. First of all, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I want to thank you for being part of our conversation and just listening and thinking about the ways that you know you journey from a, a point of discovery that you don't have all the answers going from point A to point B. You have to learn things along the way, and that's all we're doing and kind of sharing some of our own messiness with you and some of the great things that we've learned along the way and many more things to learn. Uh, If you'd like to get more information about the ministry, some of you are watching at faithandreallife.com, but we have all of our free resources there as well as videos and all of the work that we do in order to inspire others through faith and real life situations. So you can go to the website faithandreallife.com and we also have a full podcast library as well as access to all of the 200 and some episodes that we did for the Catholic Channel. So lots of information up there. Um, If you really enjoyed tonight and uh, this is a ministry that you feel compelled to share some of your gifts with, um, you can make a donation uh, to the ministry right there by clicking on our donate button or going to beadonor.com. That's B-E-E-A-Donor.com and you can go ahead and become a one-time or a monthly supporter that way as well. I don't have a next event, so just stay tuned for updates. Okay. Um, here's our lightning round real quick, and we're going to do this. Uh, okay, I don't know how long we're going to do it, but we'll try to go. Uh, so what I want to do is we're just going to go around the table, give a quick one-line explanation. Everybody has to answer. You have to be on your toes. It's not a drinking game, I promise. Um, might, be make it one. might be when you're done. <laughs> it's like Jeff, <laughs> you, you may build off of other people's <laughs> answers if you'd like. Um, 
Do we expect too much from our kids? Well, sometimes we do, sir. Oh, come on, answer the question, yes or no. You can't say sometimes. <laughs> it's just a yes or no question? Yeah, pretty much. Yes, yes. Jody. I think it's some respect, yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. No. 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 Okay. You're allowed, there's two of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's my gut tells me, do I expect too much? No. Jeff. No. Why? Oh, shoot, I didn't see <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for him to tell me that. So we've, I mean, yeah, so we, we, we've tried to be really straightforward with our kids. Yeah. We, we are not an accomplishment-based love. Yeah. We're not an accomplishment-based family, right? We, I've said to our kids ever since they were little, always try your hardest. Just always try your hardest. If you're giving your best effort, then, and you fail, like, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I have to say no. Yeah. yeah. What do you say? I agree with my husband. You agree with that? I do. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> I thought you were saying three one. I think I said that. You know, I will say that. Are you saying, but, but here's the question. Do we need to go the lightning round the other way? Is the world expecting too much of our kids? No, no, no. We'll Is get that to that, that in a second. But, um, <laughs> but I'm trying to ask for a listen. I expect too much from my kids when I want them to understand more quickly than they're capable of. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but like you, we don't have any expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think you're all that way, but... Just, yeah, yeah when, well, when, I, when I say yes to that, it's that I want them to get it. And I want them to understand what I'm saying. So then here would be the other way that um, I would ask the question. Go the other way. Uh, I won't really... <laughs> <answer. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Do you... Do, um, that's a good question. Or I can even ask you, do we make them uncomfortable enough? Right, okay, so that's an excellent question. I don't think I make my kids uncomfortable enough. Okay. I don't. I'm kind of uncomfortable. No. Yeah, no, just like challenging I that with their, with their perspective or their views of yeah. the world. Yeah. I don't, I, that is something that I have a, I wish I had started with that earlier. In my, in my, in, in my what, in what they have to do, right? You know, it's so easy as a parent. Like, I'm going to try to clear the way for them, right. and you know, mm -hmm. hey, listen, buddy, you get to go do that one yourself. I mean, just there's, there's so, those are so many like teachable moments that like I just wish I had them back mm -hmm. to say like, hey, you got to go talk to your teacher. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got to go talk to your coach. You got to go talk to your friend. You got, I mean, like those yeah. are those moments where you're just like. This is someday going to be a boss. This is someday going to be a spouse. Yeah. Right. This is and and that's like it's really good to learn those skills in like middle school, and high school, and mm -hmm. other stuff, college, where you're like, all right, you yeah. can. Bring you're way better about that than me. Yeah. What's that? You need to go to talk to your. I mean, you you modeled that See, for me long before, mm -hmm. long before yeah. I was able to do it myself. Mm -hmm. You need to go talk to your teacher. You need to go talk to your. Um, so coach. you're a no and you're a yes. The dialogue was so good. I'm like, yeah, it resonates. Do we challenge them enough? enough? Do we make them uncomfortable enough? Yes. Paul Layton, they might be watching. You're yes. No, it's not that. I guess what I'm trying to put in this context of Jeff said, I found myself saying the same. Like, I'm not going to solve your problems for you. So if by saying, am I challenging them that way, then I'd say, yeah, I'd probably do enough. But then there are probably other times where I don't challenge them when there's no situation to be challenged. Like just challenge just, them in your, hey, did you make a good choice? Did, hey, did you, what did you do in this situation? Like, I don't, probably don't challenge them in that perspective enough. Are you living a good Christian life? You know, mm -hmm. I don't think I right. challenge them in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that part of the answer, no. But I don't solve their problems as much. Jody and I have a, a lot of those challenge. discussions. You a good challenge, like a dull challenge. It's a very not like, voting person. Yeah. Right, like he makes, yeah, and I'm more like, I'll fix it here. <laughs> here, here, here's a band-aid, here's, you know, and I wish I would have been more like, you know. Well, you got to nurse Go your sister back together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. But that's yeah. it, you know. So, that's, yeah. I, think that, yeah. I would say no, I would say no, we yeah. haven't challenged them. I, Quite enough. I'm, I am very much like you, Jody. I'm a real fixer. I'm like right away, come up with a plan. Here's okay. So here's how we're going to do this, yeah. and you know, and I, I don't give them 
the opportunity to figure it out themselves. I'm, I'm, you know. But do you find that, like, with my kids, it's like they know what they really want and need. Like they'll go to him. <laughs> they yeah. Said, you know what I mean? Like if they want like a cry or like a, feel like they are being heard, then they come to me. If not, if they want to know, okay, bottom line, do I? Get the, I am hard. Do I get the, you know, <laughs> I am starting to notice who they go to, when, for what. I, I have. I didn't. Always the best sure that everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. But it's also a beautiful part of a marriage that God didn't make us the same for a reason. Right. I mean, women have. Right. Thank you. That's, know, why, that's why you need to be beautiful. Here would, so when, even when we think about this question, I would then say, do we challenge them enough to recognize gratitude, and do we challenge them enough to recognize what they need to do over? You know, I always love that question mm -hmm. as a dinner time conversation. What was the best part of your day? And if you could do one thing over, what would it be? So, oh, man, that's another tradition. Very yeah, you do that all the time. Thanksgiving. You know, I, I, I do important. think, um, I do think that we don't challenge them enough to see the the good, mm -hmm. uh, and we do focus on fixing the bad. So, um, let's just do one more in the interest of time. Um, Make it an easier one. <laughs> yeah. No. Favorite color? No. Um, <laughs> Sorry, favorite color. <laughs> oh, man, that's a deep one. We can't go over there. There are a lot one. of big ones. I know. I'm a deep guy. What do you want me to say? Uh, you can challenge us. <laughs> we talked about a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, okay, last one. Oh. Whew. This is a rough one. Same level, same question. You see the train wreck coming. You see that the conductor lost his brakes and the train is barreling down the tracks. Do you fix it or do you let it smash into the side of the mountain so that you can beat her to pick up the pieces? I, I have not yet learned to be able to do that. I mean, I'm, our is kids this are a guy getting, thing too? It I is. think so. I mean, can you see, like, I mean, yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you. Do you see what you've done, right? <laughs> <laughs> you see the vision now that you yeah. forced us to see. I once had one of the the men's groups, like twenty years when I first moved back to the Cleveland area, right at Langers. So there's a men's group there, and one of the gentlemen said this, and I've always lived by this. You know, the kids were young at the time, and uh, it's never left me. But to answer that question, I'm like, it, it's sort of situational. I look at it as if this is a serious, like if this is can really cause harm like to them or to somebody physical mental like one and then yeah i'm probably going to go in there and, and prevent the wreck um but if it's not you know if it's not a and i always use the i think the, the way i remember this is like are they going to remember this in three years in three years from now you're going to look back at this event and say this changed my life like for the worse right or, or and if the answer is then yeah i'm going to intervene i'm not going to let them fall off that cliff Right. Um, but boy, I'm going to let them go as close as they can, and yeah, they need to fall down. They need to stub their toe, and so I need to see them make. So that's how you. My experience <laughs> and my belief is that's how you grow and learn the most is from making mistakes. And when I tell my kids, I was saying, I just know, don't. I know how this movie ends. <laughs> <laughs> and you want a different outcome? Huh? Yeah. No, I was not watching you make the decisions, and I'm yeah. like. I know how this movie ends. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it's I a, can't watch. I can't watch. I, I yeah. turn the channel. I. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and I, I would agree with you, Paul, on that one, right? It, it's if, hard. if it's if it's one of those situations where yeah, they're going to remember it, and it's going to be a negative, and there's something I could do to maybe prevent them from that level of harm. Yeah. Like I'll do that. Although I don't always get asked for that type of insider, I'm not. I don't always have visibility to prevent right. it. Is no, what no, I mean. We're there. There that our kids aren't like huge risk takers or so far. Um, <laughs> Who we know about? We still react. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, we know of that we could have even made a decision right. to stop yeah. anything. But I do. I do believe like you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, I've, I've got a good mentor of mine. Uh, Tim Lyons, who you know, and, and uh, it, you know, I always would, Tim's about 20 years older than I am, and, and I always say, like, Tim, why can't I learn from your mistakes? Why yeah, don't I always yeah, right. learning from yeah. my own? <laughs> yeah, so it's just the way it works, you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a much more impactful thing, and, you know, love, 
there's nothing that we can do to change where we've been. All we can do is start today. Mm -hmm. And I think that we all know that we can be encouraged by what other people do. We can know what's happening in our own home and know where our children are in, in a level of depression or mental illness or situations. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing to have a bad breakup. It's another to allow somebody to be in an abusive relationship. Yeah. Um, so everything has situation. its situation and everything has its time. But I think that we would all agree that without God, this is not possible. Mm -hmm. Without the ability to allow ourselves to take on the pain for our children, mm -hmm. without the ability to see how God would treat us in a situation, that we're always gonna to continue to struggle. And so the final piece I would just say is surrender. Surrender to the notion that uh, God created you for a specific purpose. He loves your children more than you could ever possibly yeah. love them. Yeah, right. And if you entrust them back to him, he's going to do everything that he can to protect them inside his will. Mm -hmm. And if we've surrounded ourselves with the right people, and we have a foundation in community and faith, we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll be all right. Mm -hmm. So this was fun. We'll do this again sometime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and uh, thank you. Thanks for thank being you. here and sharing yourself. And uh, we'll continue to pray for you. And let's just end our time together in uh, in prayer. Um, and so we just begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, we know that so many people watching this evening. Um, are journeying right next to us. And so, Lord, we just ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon our families, uh, those watching, and, Lord, upon our children. Uh, help our children to know that there is nothing in this world that is bigger than you, and help them to understand that in their loss and in their time of need, that, Lord, you are the way and you are the light, and that even if we feel unlovable, you see past every bit and every ounce of ugliness that we see and you only see that we're capable of and how we get past it. Lord, we praise you and we thank you and we pray especially for those who have no family and those who have no one to love them. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so that's where I'm at tonight. God bless you. God keep you. Have a great week and I pray that God will meet you everywhere that you desire him always.